So let's get started. We will begin from the very basic, okay? Throughout the session, we will be solving problems and while solving the problems itself, we'll be learning concepts as well, okay? So uh, DP is something which people try to learn by solving a lot of questions, but that is not the ideal way. The first way is to understand the symptoms that you can see in a problem and tag that problem as a DP problem. Otherwise, what you can end up doing is that a question solvable using binary search or solvable using greedy algorithms, you might hit it using DP, leading you to no conclusion, okay? So how to recognize that is the first thing which we will all learn. Cool, so uh, let me ask you, have you ever heard of something called as triangular numbers? It's just a family of mathematical numbers. If you have heard of it, you can type in yes. If no, you can type in no. Okay, a lot of you have not heard of it. So what I'll do is I'll draw some diagram on the board. Keep looking very carefully. Looking at that diagram itself, maybe you can get to know what it is, okay? So let me draw a dot over here. Then let me draw these many dots here. Then let me draw these many dots here. And then even more dots here. So let me comma separate them. Do you see something? What do you see? You see that there are several triangles which are being drawn by using dots, okay? This is the smallest triangle containing only one dot. This triangle has got three dots. This triangle has got six dots. This triangle has got 10 dots. So let me write that, okay? One dot, three dots, six dots, 10 dots, and so on and on. So this is a series of numbers and such series of numbers is called as triangular numbers. Does it give you an idea about what it is? Just type in yes or no. Yeah, okay. So many of you are coming up with different ideas like how these numbers can be obtained. Uh, the intention is not to do that because that is a fairly easy problem, okay? The point is to understand few things over here. So when you look at these numbers, do you observe some patterns? In fact, let me ask you a question in this manner. Can you guess how many dots will be there in next greater triangle? Roughly how many dots? Think of it. Okay, one of you is saying 15, others? Cool, most of you are saying 15 and looks like that is correct. So let's try to understand. So here, if I take a look, I have got a one dot. Here, if I take a look, in the first level, there is one dot. In the second level, there are two dots. So this three is one plus two. Here in the first level, there is one dot. In the second level, two dots. In the third level, three dots. So the six is one plus two plus three. And similarly, this 10 is one plus two plus three plus four. So common sense says that, hey, next whatever you will get will be one plus two plus three plus four plus five. And this thing is going to be 15, right? Cool. So let us say we are given a very simple question. Somebody will give us an integer n, where n of course will be positive. And he asks me to print the first n triangular numbers. So if n is equals to four, I have to print first four triangular numbers. And those are one, three, six, and 10. So tell me how many of you can solve this question? And if you can solve this, what will be the time complexity? Just type it in the chat box. Okay, so a lot of you are saying you can do it in order and time. Cool. Now comes the observation part. And this is, I'm helping you with ABC of dynamic programming, okay? So try to get it very, very clearly. So guys, here if I take a look, can I say that the next triangle can always be created from the previous triangle? Because if I have to create this, all that I'll have to do is I'll have to add four more dots below it. When you add four more dots below this thing, this is what you will be getting, right? So this is an idea to understand. So what is happening over here? If I know the solution to smaller problem, using it, I'm able to create the solution of a larger problem. So I'll write this line, solution to a larger problem is being obtained from solution to a smaller problem. What do I mean by larger? What do I mean by smaller? So larger means here your n is equals to four. This is your fourth triangular number, this 10. And here your n is equals to three. This is your third triangular number, six, right? 
so whenever such kind of symptoms are seen in a question now it might not be seen in every question if it is seen then you can tag that question as a dp question and you can try thinking in that direction uh, does this make sense just type in yes or no if you get that okay so if you understand this point think of the different ways to solve this question first way can be as simple as this uh, what i'll do is to create the first triangular number i'll add 1 to my sum so let's say i have a variable sum i'll add 1 to it and i'll get my first triangular number to create my second triangular number i'll add 1 plus 2 to create third triangular num triangular number i'll do 1 plus 2 plus 3 so i can say that hey nth triangular number is nothing nothing but sum of first n natural numbers this is what i can say right cool now think of it in this way if you know what your third triangular number is, then in order to find your fourth triangular number, will you start counting from one again? Is that the right thing to do? Just think and say. That's not an efficient thing to do. That is correct, but that's not efficient. Because I know that if the n minus one triangular number is known, I can just add n to it and get my nth triangular number. So you can see that happening over here. T of n, which is your nth triangular number, can be written as T of n minus 1 plus n. Now, if you substitute n equals to 4, you will see T4 equals to T3 plus 4. And what does this mean? This simply means that in your third triangular number, which is 6, you just add 4, and that is how you get 10, which is your next triangular number. Okay? This kind of equation is completely consistent with it because it is saying that a higher triangular number is a function of a lower triangular number. Okay. And this is called as, in the language of DP, this is called as optimal substructure. So it's good that you remember this term because you will be hearing it again and again everywhere. Okay. So what is optimal substructure? Just an equation that relates solution of a larger problem to a solution of a smaller sub problem. Does that make sense? Do all understand what is an optimal substructure? So now that we understand this thing, I can say that, hey, what I can do is I can have an array of size n if I am supposed to find n triangular numbers. And I would say that, hey, the first triangular number is one. And then I would run my loop from two to n. And I would say that, hey, ith triangular number should be i minus one i minus 1 a triangular number plus i. So this is a simple piece of logic that I can write. Okay. So we are done with the first most important uh, symptom of DP that is optimal substructure. Now, basically, it just means first solve the smallest problem, which is solved for the smallest triangular number. Now, using it, you can create the next higher. Using that, you can create the next higher and so on and on and on. Now, this loop is going to run for n times. So its time complexity will be order n because every time you run it, you are just performing one addition, which is constant time operation, right? Cool. 